Hi, I'm Hugh from SRI, and we've just finished putting the GC up on the bench, got it out of the shipping container, put it up on the bench, and we've connected it to the Peak Simple software, which comes free with the GC. So now we have to get the GC up and rolling. So the first thing to do is to get a gallon of distilled water from Walmart. It's about a dollar, and you pour the distilled water into this water reservoir of the hydrogen generator that comes built in to this particular model of GC, the 310 m Sometimes it's good to give this little tube a pinch to make sure the water is flowing down through the hydrogen generator. And when the hydrogen generator is happy, there's two numbers that show up on the display here. The, the bottom number should be about 2.1 or 2.2, and it's a very stable number. It doesn't float around. This upper number is the cell voltage, and it tells us how happy the hydrogen generator cell is. A number that's close to 2 is good. A number that's 4 or 5 is bad. So it's important to use distilled water because the hydrogen generator is not happy with anything that has minerals in the water. So that can make the hydrogen generator malfunction. So please, distilled water only. So you can see there are bubbles coming up from this tube. These are the oxygen bubbles and also a little water that's pushed with it. On this tube here that's coming out of the hydrogen generator is where the hydrogen comes out along with a little blurb of water every now and then. So the, the hydrogen goes down into this plastic tube we call a, a water trap. right? So the water falls to the bottom of this little plastic tube and then the hydrogen gas goes to the top and comes out here through this little plastic tube which goes to a a fitting called a, a Y fitting or a splitter where the, the gas can go one of two possible directions. It can either go through this tube which ends up over here or it can go through that tube which ends up over here and we'll talk about more that more in just a second but there are little plastic clips that allow you to let the gas go one place or the other so this top one the clip is not clipped the, the tube is not um, pinched whereas this bottom one the, the little plastic clip is pinched, shutting off the flow of gas to that tube. So that's how you would determine which one of these injectors gets the gas, is by clipping one and unclipping the other. So right now I've got this bigger one here, the heated injector, unclipped. So all the gas, all the hydrogen gas, is going to this injector. And then the injector looks like this. It's a, a stainless steel tube that has a nut on the front called a septum nut, and inside the, the septum nut there's something called a septum, which is a little rubber plug. In this case it's green, but they come in different colors, and it's silicone rubber. So what it does is it keeps the hydrogen gas inside this fitting, but lets the syringe that we're going to use to squirt the, the cannabis extract in, lets it poke through the rubber plug and into the flowing stream of hydrogen. At the back side of this fitting is another tube called a column. So this particular kind of tube is called a capillary column and it looks like a wire but it's actually a tube. You can actually stick a, a, a little syringe needle into the, the entrance of that if you've got a steady hand. So what happens is we're going to squirt the cannabis sample into this hot tube. It'll evaporate the cannabinoids and everything else into a vapor and the hydrogen pushes the sample through the tube to the very end. At the end of the tube, there's another thing called a flame ionization detector. So the tube ends up going into the flame ionization detector where there's actually a little flame right in the middle of the fitting, which is lit by this thing called an igniter, which stays permanently red hot. So as long as there's hydrogen going to that fitting, there'll be a flame at the middle of that fitting. And when hydrogen burns, it makes water, so it's very important that you be able to see the water vapor which is coming out of this fitting here, because that's your evidence that the flame is lit, and the flame has to be lit in order for this to detect the molecules. So the, the condensation on a shiny wrench is your proof that everything is working and connected correctly. So this oven here that the tubes are located in has to be controlled by the computer because the oven doesn't just stay at one temperature, it starts at a low temperature and then rises to a high temperature. In the cannabis version of the software, the temperature program comes defaulted to the correct temperature for analyzing the cannabinoids. And 
the temperature starts at 140 degrees, which is echoed by the display here on the front of the GC, because whatever this tells the GC, the GC follows the temperature program. So we're going to start at 140, and we're going to end at 225, and then we're going to cool back down and be ready for the next analysis, and all of that is going to take approximately 10 minutes to do. So, if, um, if everything is working with the GC, it should say 140 degrees here, and it should say 140 degrees here on the front panel. There's a switch under here that actually switches between um, monitoring the temperature of the oven and monitoring the numbers that show up when I push these various buttons on the front of the GC. This is the temperature of the flame ionization detector, detector 2. Right now it's 293 degrees and climbing toward where it's supposed to be, which is 300 degrees, so it's almost there. As soon as it gets there, it'll stop and just stay there at 300 degrees until you turn the GC off. The injector here also has a, a set point of 200 degrees, and right now it's climbing toward that set point of 200. It's 192 and increasing, so when it gets to 200, everything will be ready, and when everything's ready, after 60 seconds of everything being ready, this light will light, this ready light. So you don't have to wait for the light to light in order to start the analysis, but when the light lights, it's reassuring. There it is. It just lit up saying that everything's at the correct temperature and ready to perform an analysis. So the first analysis that we want to do is to inject the calibration standard. So there are several companies, really more like 10 companies in the United States alone, that make calibration standards for measuring cannabinoids. So the, the calibration standards come from a company like Restec or Lipomed or Ceruliant or Ultra Standard or AccuStandard. You can really shop around and take your pick, but they all deliver the calibration standard in a little glass bottle here called an ampule. So the ampule is sealed with a flame so that no air can get in or out, and it lasts for a very long time. It's a good idea to keep them in the fridge, but the um, most of them don't absolutely need refrigeration and they stay pretty much intact as long as you don't break open the ampule but you have to break the ampule so the trick to breaking the ampule is to put a little spit on the narrow neck of the ampule because that's where it's going to break and then the trick is to pull the ampule apart before you crack so you're cracking it while it's under some kind of tension some companies give you a little sleeve like this to put on there so that if something goes wrong, it cracks and cuts your finger. It's better to have a little protection. So anyway, you crack open the ampule, and then you need to transfer the contents into another little bottle. So SRI gives you some of these little bottles. They're called auto sampler vials. They have a volume of somewhere between one and a half and two milliliters, and you can buy them on Amazon for about 25 cents each, maybe even less. You buy a pack of 100 for $25. Comes with a little cap that has another little rubber septum on there so you can seal it off. But you have to get the calibration sample um, standard out of the ampule and into the bottle. So if you just try to pour it, you'll probably lose most of it. You'll spill most of it. So what you do is you take one of these little disposable plastic pipettes. You can reuse them if you like. They don't have to be disposable. We give you half a dozen with the GC so you have what you need. So you, you suck up and then you bring it real close and then you dump the calibration standard into the bottle. And so you'll have to do that um, three times usually, at least in the beginning of your career. You're going to want one for the CBD calibration, another one for the THC calibration, and a third one for the CBN calibration. Now you can buy more. Those three are pretty inexpensive. They're about $30 each for one of these ampules. You can buy CBC, CBG, Delta 8, THCV, and maybe more by the time you see this video. But those tend to be much more expensive. But you can have as many different calibration standards as you want to measure different cannabinoids. So you take the CBD calibration standard, you put it in a bottle, and then you take out your labeling equipment and you make a real nice label saying, okay, this is the CBD, because it's easy to mix them up if you don't label them as you go. So then you do the same thing for the THC, the same thing for the CBN, and then you have them in little um, auto sampler vials. So now we have to actually make our calibration standard out of these 
um, primary standards, right? So we're, we're going to take a syringe, and this is a, called a 100 microliter syringe, and we give you one of these with your cannabis kit, right? So this is able to measure up to 100 microliters. So here's a little bottle of clean acetone. So I'm going to suck a little bit of clean acetone up and just rinse out my syringe. And then I've got my auto sampler vial ready and waiting, nice clean auto sampler vial. So I'm going to take the CBD and I'm going to suck up 100 microliters of the CBD. A microliter is a, a millionth of a liter and we have to talk in these small volumes because the GCs can't really swallow a big volume of things so they have to swallow a very small amount. So there's my 100 microliters of the CBD into that bottle. So now here is my 100 microliters of the THC. See how I'm, I'm sucking it up? Sometimes there's a little bubble in the syringe and you just have to compensate for the bubble as precisely as you can. Get the 100 microliters, put it in the bottle. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the, the CBN. 100 microliters. Now this is kind of our recipe that we, we propagate because if you follow our recipe and you run into some kind of difficulty, it's easy for us to figure out what you did. If you do something else rather than what we do, then that's fine, you know, you can, you can do it. But it makes it hard to communicate with us if you're doing something radically different. So anyhow, now there's 300 microliters of liquid in that bottle. Can you get a good shot of that? Make sure that you can see how much liquid is in that, that little vial. So now I have to add an equal volume of what we call the dirty solvent. It's kind of a joke. We call it dirty solvent. So it's easy to remember the difference between dirty solvent and new solvent, right? Clean solvent. This is what you buy for $15 a gallon at the Home Depot, and that's clean solvent. This is dirty solvent. The difference is that we've added this stuff to the clean acetone to make it dirty. And what we've added is something called methyl stearate. Now, methyl stearate is very cheap stuff. It's, it's, it's basically palm oil. Um, and you can buy a kilogram of this stuff for about $30, which is enough for several lifetimes of use. So what I've done is I've, I've dissolved one gram per gallon of acetone. So one gram of this in one gallon of acetone is what we use to make the dirty solvent. So we take the dirty solvent, and whatever volume of liquid is in that vial, I have to add an equal amount of the dirty solvent. So, if you, if you had put four different cannabinoids into the bottle and you had 400 microliters, you'd have to add 400 microliters of the dirty solvent. But we have only put three, and we have 300 microliters, so I'm going to add 300 microliters of the dirty solvent. So that's what I'm doing here. So there's 100 microliters, and then 200 microliters. and then 300 microliters. Okay, and then I can pour the rest back into the dirty solvent bottle. So now there should be 600 microliters of liquid in that auto sampler vial, and I need to label that. So you can use any labeling system you like but we like to put a little colored tape on things and then use a, a Sharpie. And I'm going to label this as 333 nanograms per microliter of CBD, THC, and CBN. I'll put today's date on it, which is 6420. And then I'm going to put the date that I made the dirty solvent on, which is 81419 doesn't really matter, but there needs to be some code that you follow where this bottle of calibration standard is somehow keyed to this bottle of dirty solvent, because in order to avoid errors, you have to use the same bottle of dirty solvent to make your samples up that you use to make the calibration.